Welcome to the shop. In this video, I'm going to be talking about disassembling parts of the Inquala for maintenance. The Inquala is large and heavy and difficult to pack and sometimes can suffer shipping damage even when packed carefully. So if it's ever necessary to repair an Inquala, packing it up and sending it back to me is the worst possible option. The Inquala is designed to be a modular system and pretty much every component is field replaceable using simple tools and simple mechanical techniques. So in most cases, you can just uh, take a bad part off, send it to me, I'll fix it or replace it, or I'll just send you a new good part. In this video, I'm going to be talking about removing the removing and replacing the handle and controller assembly. So the handle, controller, and the hand control section are all connected together and can be removed from the Inquala very simply using a five screws and disconnecting the cable harness. If there's ever a problem with the controller or the electronics, this is the best option for getting the problem taken care of. So I'm going to move the camera in closer so we can see the details of what's going on. The first step is to rotate the head into this position where the heat shield is on your table and the controller housing is facing up. The Inquala head has been rotated so that the heat shield is facing down, laying on the bench, and the controller housing is facing up. And you can see the connectors right along the back here that need to be removed. Before removing the connectors, remove power. So now it's important that the Inquala be resting, the head of the Inquala be resting on the bench, because when power is removed, the bearings are really good, and if your tabletop isn't absolutely level within just a degree or so, the Inquala will start moving off in a direction you probably don't want. So before removing power, make sure that it's sitting securely on your bench or on a towel or something so that it stays under control. Now, we're going to be using a very small flat blade screwdriver, nothing special, but small thin blade. And we're going to be very carefully inserting the blade at the top and very gently and carefully prying out the connector. The connector fits fairly securely and this method is necessary. Don't just pull on the wires. It might damage the uh, connections of the wires to the crimp to the connector body. Always use a small screwdriver to pry the connectors out. And once again, don't try to get them out pulling on the wires. They, the connectors actually have little locking bumps on them to keep them securely in the uh, mating connection. And the locking bumps work pretty darn good. And it's, you know, it's, it's hard to pull them out by the wires and not recommended. So now rotate the other direction so that now the motor and controller is on your bench top. Once again, remembering to keep everything under control. Then, using a standard Phillips screwdriver, 
remove the two screws that hold on. Well, actually, you really don't need to remove the second screw. You can just loosen the second screw and rotate around. So now there are two screws, and these are uh, 832 socket head screws. I'm using a T-handle socket driver, but you can use a regular hex key, whatever you have, it'll work. And then remove the two 832 screws. Now, the screws are locked in place with removable Loctite, so they might be kind of hard to get off if you notice that the screw is resisting a little bit, make sure that you're using, that, that you're not using the ball end driver if you have ball end drivers. If the screw seems like it's going to take a lot of force to remove, make sure that you use the straight hex key. Make sure the hex key is inserted fully and you have control of the handle as you uh, twist. It, it, it really depends. Loctite is somewhat inconsistent and sometimes it, it, it's harder to remove than other times, but the Anquala is assembled using removable Loctite as opposed to, it's the, the blue Loctite as opposed to the red, which is much more difficult to remove. The next step is the screw down lower that holds on the controller. Now I have a special long, because I do a lot of these, a special long hex driver that very conveniently unscrews the screw, but a standard hex key will work just fine. The clearance is slightly limited because you got to get in here, but it's not a real problem. So there we have the handle. Let me get the, the unit out of the way here. The handle and controller which is then sent to me for repair. Then when, the, when it's returned, you have to notice that the wires have what's called a service loop built in. That means the wire is a little longer than the absolute minimum that it needs to be. And this is to allow the circuit board to be removed for maintenance and troubleshooting and then the wires are kind of like wadded up and poked into place. And you got to make sure when you're reassembling this that you don't have a wire. Let me show what not to do here. You don't want to have a wire hanging out that gets pinched in between the aluminum and the housing here. You want to make sure that all of the wires are safely and securely poked into place. And you might want to use the little screwdriver or your finger or a pencil eraser or whatever. But eventually you want to have this surface completely clear with no wires hanging over when you go to replace the handle assembly. And of course, replacement and reinstallation is just the reverse of disassembly. So I hope this vi video is useful and I hope you never have to remove your handle. <laughs> but if you do, this is the way to get the job done. So see you later.